that that remains is of the kingdom. We don't have to be in fear. We need to stay in faith. He's shaking it for us, not against it. Somebody say amen. amen. This shaking is going to position us for the great end time harvest, for the season that's about to come. He's shaking us up to change our mindset, to get rid of this escapism mindset and begin to get a harvest mentality. Because it's time for the harvest. The harvest is here. The harvest is now. The fields are white and ready for harvest. Everywhere I look, everywhere I turn, hearts are being ready, prepared by the Lord. All you need to do is just open your heart to him right now. Just open up your heart to him. And if you're believing God for a prodigal to come home, I want you to know you're in season. If you're believing for a backslider that's been out there, that's been wounded, that's been hurt, that's in your family, you're in season. Right now, just lift your heart to the Lord and lift up that loved one. You know who they are and what you've been praying for. Now give your, give your prayers some wings now. Begin to just release that to the Lord. Let him know that you know that his name is Abel. Come on now, he can do it. Our God is able, hallelujah, he can do it. Father, we just thank you. Father, we thank you that this is the season, Lord. This is the season that our hearts will be prepared, that this is a season of hope, that this is a season of expectation, that this is a season even now, Lord, reconciliation and restoration in families, in homes, in ministries, Lord, that this is the hour. You're, this is your moment, Lord. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be high and lifted up in our hearts. Let your name be high and lifted up in this place. Let your name be high and lifted up all across this land. This is Canada's moment, Lord. Let your banner go across this land. Your banner of love, Lord. Your banner of unity and harmony, let it go across the land. And we'll give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was talking somewhere in there about miracles. I remember the first time that I smelled the fragrance that I knew was the Lord. I was at camp in, uh, in, in Ashland, Virginia, and I'm sitting about halfway back just off the center aisle, and uh, Sister Ruth was on the platform, and they were having worship, and in the midst of that, I smelled this Beautiful smell. It wasn't man's smell. It wasn't a woman's smell. But it was one of the most beautiful smells that I've ever smelled. And I said, half out loud, that's the Lord. Can you smell him? I said, that's the Lord. And there was a lady in front of me, and a, a, a black sister from down in Maryland, and she was a pastor, and she turned around, she's a good-sized sister, and she said, yes. Yes, she says, and look at this. And when I looked, oil was running out of her hands. Just then, Sister Ruth stood up and said, can you smell that? She said, that's the Lord. Now, I say that, I look at that sister's hands, I take her hands and put it right on my head. <laughs> man, I'm going to tell you what, I'm hungry, man. Yeah. I remember the first the first year we came up here, uh, the first year I was in the, in the uh, farmhouse, uh, two missionary friends of ours that we went to school with, uh, A.W. and Kathy Jones, were in the house. And, and we had some other people there sitting at the table with us. And all of a sudden, we smelled like a fire burning. And I mean, it was like really a strong scent of a fire burning, right? And we thought, oh, what are we going to do now, you know? I, you know, let's look around. What's on fire? Something must be on fire. We run downstairs. We run upstairs. Said, well, it's, the smell is still there. Said, pull out all the plugs. So we start pulling all the plugs out of the wall, right? We pull all the plugs out of the wall. The smell's still there. I said, oh, no. Maybe we should call the fire company. Something's wrong, you know? And, and uh, just then the Lord said, relax, it's me. <laughs> I said, that's the Lord. And just then the smell went away and came back again. Right? All that quickly. And then we just knew that the Lord was in the house. And, and then we began to speak the things of God. And we, I mean, you know, we had church. Huh? Hallelujah. You know, I don't got to go to church. I have church. We are the church. Ooh. There's some good things that are going to happen in here tonight. I hope you came ready to receive. This prophetic season that we're in is a very, very important moment, very prophetic moment, very strategic moment before the Lord because we are right at that turning point, right at that tipping point right now in the spirit.
these things that are happening all around us, these things that are happening to you personally. Maybe you've been going through some stuff these last six months. I say hallelujah. I'll be, you know what? Because the Lord is shaking stuff up and he's doing something. He's at work. I don't know about you, but I don't want him to stop working on me. So I mean, something's going to happen. There's going to be something good that's going to be in I'm telling you, there's fire in the river of God. Get ready. Get ready because there's some fresh fire that's coming. Something wonderful is on the way. So get your heart ready for that. We have some folks in the house tonight that I'd, I'd like you to welcome and to bless. Some really good friends of ours, Merv and Muriel Medewick, that are uh, the CEO, chairman of the board, whatever, of the American Channel. Let's give them a great big hand. <laughs> great. Mama and Papa in the spirit of so many people everywhere. And then we have our brother here who's a missionary to, um, to Ireland, I believe. To Ireland? Uh-huh. And uh, Paul Milner with Interfaith Ministries. Let's give him a great big hand. We got Pastor Beck and his wife and family in the back row. Many of you know the good brother. Yeah, come on, give him a great big hand from, from New York. He spent a lot of time up here with us. We sure appreciate him and everything that's going on right now. I know there's a lot of you. If you're a pastor that's in the house, could you just stand up for us for just a minute? We just want to give you a hand. Let's just give him a great big hand. Thank you, God. Mm -hmm. It's so good to, to have you here with us. You know, I'm going to start off reading a, a word that uh, Pastor Maeve got a few weeks ago, uh, prophetically and poetically. How many of you enjoy that when she starts to get that? Hallelujah. Brother, the Lord says a big shift is coming, a big change, a directional change, and a shift in the spirit. The Lord says, you've been fighting and fighting and fighting, and you've been running and banging your head against the wall. The Lord says, get ready for a breakthrough. The Lord says that the enemy and even some people around about you have thought you came to bring division. They thought you came with one thing in mind, but a whole different thing's about ready to happen. The Lord says, you came with unity on your heart and to bring and to gather people together. The Lord says that the enemy has tried to distort things and turn things around and even turn people against you. But the Lord says, get ready for vindication, for a season of vindication is on the way. And no, a financial breakthrough is coming your way as well. Something that seems to have had you rooted in a place because there was a, a, such a need that you couldn't seem to get out of that place and I see you stuck. And all of a sudden, boom, he said, breakthrough, breakout. This is the season for it now, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord gave Pastor made this a couple of weeks ago. She posted it on her uh, on her Facebook. Hey, do we have any do we have any Pastor Maeve Facebook fans? Uh-oh. Come on now, that's just to be on Facebook. Goodness gracious. I sure appreciate you. I sure appreciate you sharing her with me. She wants to give me say deliver tonight. <laughs> the Lord said to her, every house of God that allows the river to run through it must be ready for God to deal with the hearts of the people. Now, more than ever before, God is dealing with wrong attitudes and behaviors. He's dealing with criticism and gossip. He's teaching through testing. There's a, a fire in the river of God, and it brings refreshing and refining. The church is in season, in a season of transitioning, positioning, and transformation. God is testing and trying the hearts of his people. Sometimes those that we love the most, bear with the most, pour into the most, spend our time with energy prayer on, are the very ones who will turn on us and attack us. We work with them, doing our best to keep them in the family, and they still respond with unforgiveness or bitterness instead, instead of humility and repentance for their part in problems. How we handle this is most important. As apostolic leaders, and I say as end time leaders, we must, no matter the situation or circumstance, determine to walk in love. Faith works by love. Leaders who are walking in unforgiveness and refusing to be reconciled are in a place of ineffective faith. Leaders believing God for provision and increase must keep these doors closed if they want to have open doors of blessing. 
As the shaking of the Lord continues in the church, many are being tested in these areas. Offense, tithing, giving, accountability, character, dependability, and loyalty. Covenant is being tested more than ever before in marriage, in church, and in the family. Judgment begins in the house of the Lord, and this is the season where we need to judge ourselves that we would not be judged. To your own self be true. People are drawn to the anointing, but we can't take context to war. We need commitment to the purpose and to the plan and to the vision of God. We need covenant, and those who are standing and staying in covenant Come hell and high water, no, those committed to dwell together in unity, true covenant people, in it for the journey, not just for a ride. There is power in our covenant place, and when we are in agreement, we can have those things we are believing God for. Covenant is not control on either side. Many talk about abuse from pastors and leaders, and there can be and has been cases for this for sure. However, there is rebellion and manipulation that comes also from the pew. Covenant brings abundant life to those whose hearts are knit together in singleness of vision and purpose. As leaders in the body of Christ, God is expecting us to lead in word and in deed. Leadership is not a position, it's an action. Those who follow us will be watching and emulating us. Let's be like the Apostle Paul and say, follow me as I follow Christ. The season we are in and headed toward is fire in the river of God. Glory. He is testing and trying the hearts of everyone in the body of Christ, but particularly the leaders. And I'm going to speak to you tonight because many of you, most of you, are, are leaders or emerging leaders. And I want you to know that we're the first fruits of the end time harvest, that we are the harvesters. We are the ones that he is preparing now to launch out. There's a huge harvest that's coming, and it's going to be all hands on deck. And right now he's preparing, equipping, positioning the saints that he is calling, the emerging leaders, that emerging generation. And we're the first fruits of that. And we have to allow him to finish the work that he's beginning in us, because this harvest that's coming is going to require a very unusual group of leaders, a new millennium priesthood, that are not going to bow their knee to, to man or mammon, but bow their knee to the Lord and to the Lord alone, that are going to know how to declare his word, that are going to be a covenant people, that are going to be part of this end-time prophetic generation, that are going to have a, a, an ear to hear his voice and a heart to be obedient to him. There's something that's coming now. There's a new breed of leader that's coming to the surface. Everything in the church is being shaken right now. The church is in the greatest season of change and transition in its entire history. God has taken this thing apart brick by brick, and he's gone down to the foundation that he laid, and he's going to rebuild the house from the bottom up. There is a, I'm telling you, there's a remnant that's coming out. The bride is coming out of the body. And he's going to bring forth this remnant. And this remnant are going to be the end time warriors and the end time handmaidens that are called for just such a time as this. It's time for you and I to prepare ourselves for what's about to happen. You heard Don and the testimony that he had and about how that night he went home so solemn from when he heard the word of God in his heart and knew that he was being called now to, to, to come back to a place that he didn't necessarily want to go to, to do something that he didn't necessarily want to do. But he knew it was the Lord. And many of you, the Lord's been calling you. But you all got a mind of your own and a will of your own. And you know what? The only way to serve him is to surrender all. The only way to really serve him is with all your heart. There, no, there, there is no more difficult position to take than halfway in and halfway out. You know what? I don't want to serve him on my terms. I want to serve him on his terms. I want it to be his will be done. Let his kingdom come in my life. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to allow this total transformation to begin to come. I'm ready for change. I'm positioning myself now for change. I don't want to go into this next season holding on to things from the past. I want to release everything and everyone so that I have everything I can just to reach toward the new thing that God's doing. I don't know about you, but my heart is so hungry for this new thing that I'm willing to do whatever he says, go wherever he says, do whatever he wants, but you know what? I don't want to hold anything back. I don't want to leave anything on the table. 
My, when I'm done, I want it to be spent and say, hey, I want you to smile. I don't want to see a tear, man. When it's time to go, the trumpet sounds, oh, brother, the rest is history. That's the deal, man. I got what I got. Nothing on the table, nothing left. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to go. I lived that life halfway and halfway in and halfway out, and it's self-torture. Nothing less than self-torture. There's no worse place to be. The only thing you can really do is to surrender. You know what? When we sing to him and we sing a song, then we sing a song like, I surrender all. I want you to know that that's a prayer and, and, and a prophetic declaration and proclamation that you're making to the Lord. Don't you think for a minute that the enemy is going to test you? And do you always think that every test you get is the enemy? God is testing us, man. He's trying us. Huh? I mean, he's working harder on us right now. Some of us are dealing with issues right now that we thought were long ago put away. We thought we took care of that, we handled that, we dealt with that, and now all of a sudden, poof, that thing comes up. And, and you know what? It, it's in that place that means you don't want to go. I'm coming, there's some places in our heart, come on a minute now, there's some places in our heart that we just don't want to go. There are some things that I'd rather not deal with, that I'd rather not go to no more. I've been there. I've done that. That don't feel good. I don't want to go there no more. But you know what? He's going to take us out healed and whole. And the only way for that to happen is to bring it up to the surface because when he reveals it, then he heals it. He brings it back to the surface because it's not done. There's something still there. And he's bringing it back up so he can get rid of it, so he can clean this thing out and get rid of it once and for all. I don't know about you, but I'm looking to get rid of this once and for all. I want to go on unencumbered. I had some tremendous visions in 1999 and 2000 when I was in Ashland, Virginia. And while I was down there, one of the things that I saw, I, I, I saw a wheat field. And I looked at the wheat field, and, uh, and I didn't see anybody there for a minute. And the wheat was just moving and swaying in the wind. And it looked like the whole field was gold. It was just all gold and wheat. And then all of a sudden, when the wind blew, it parted. And I saw Jesus walk out of the wheat field. And as he walked out of the wheat field, his, his feet were in water up to his ankles. And I looked, and he had no, no uh, wounds. He, he was all healed. And, and now I, I, he looked back into the wheat field, and now people started to come out. First just a few, then more, then more. And a lot of them were young people and young adults. And they were coming out, and they had their kids with them. And they were coming out of that wheat field one after another. And the Lord says, no, then I'm going to bring forth my body and it's going to be healed and old. And now I'm going to bring forth this great harvest that I promised. And it's going to be a harvest of the young people and the younger generation. It's going to be a great and a mighty harvest. And he, he told me healed and whole because he showed me that he didn't have those wounds anymore. He's going to deal with our woundedness. You know, there was a time I had struggles concerning inner healing. But the Lord has showed me through... Not, not just through teaching and not just through spiritual insight, but I have seen the fruit of true inner healing prayer change the hearts of people. And I've seen that we need healing. More than anything else in the body of Christ today, we need to be healed and whole on the inside. If somebody walks down this aisle, man, and they they got two crutches and a, a, a cast on their leg, it's easy to see they got a broken leg and they can't walk. But you know what? The one that got a broken heart... It's a lot harder to recognize, and it's a whole lot harder to bring healing to it. You have to really have some people that are anointed to do, and we are blessed to have people that are able to do inner healing, deliverance ministry. That's a transformational ministry. That's a harvest. That's an end-time ministry that's important for such a time as this. Because I'm telling you what, when this harvest comes in, do you think the harvest is going to be fine? That hey, Man, when I came in, I came in with all kind of junk on me, man. Are you kidding me? Can you imagine where this harvest is coming from? Yeah. Right? We need to get ready. We need to get equipped. We need to get prepared. Because this harvest is coming now. You know, he doesn't do anything until he first speaks it to his prophets. How long have you heard the prophets say, there's a great harvest that's coming. A harvest like you've never seen. There's a wave coming. A wave that's going to bring in evangelism. A wave that's going to bring in souls. You know, how, how many times he has to tell us before we're really willing to be prepared? 
to position ourselves for preparation, for empowerment, for enablement? When are we going to say, yes, Lord, I'm willing to do. Oh, yeah, I'll go and do it. What, you think it's going to be osmosis? Just poof, it's done. You know, how would you like somebody working on your brain that never went to medical school? Hello? Come on now. There's some training, there's some equipping, there's some empowerment that needs to happen. Around the world, he's raising up apostolic resource centers, training centers, empowering equipping centers, that, that he is enabling the body of Christ to be raised up, to be properly prepared and equipped, because we are the first generation right now. This is the generation, this is the prelude. See, before the great harvest, unifying glory has to come. Unity has to come. Unity is going to birth the blessing of God. That. But you know what? We need to be ready. We need to be equipped. We need to be empowered to handle the harvest. You think he's going to bring the harvest if he's not nobody to hold the harvest? Hello? It's us. If not us, who? If we're the generation that's going to usher in the second coming of Christ, if we're the generation that's going to be here when he splits the heavens, then we might be the generation that's going to be here to handle the harvest. Because the harvest got to come first. We're so worried sometimes about end-time prophecy and even some of the end-time nonsense that you hear being passed off as end-time prophecy that has no biblical rooting. Hello? Yeah. About, and they're so worried about the, oh, about the rapture. And they, before you know it, they're so captured by the rapture that they miss the harvest that's right before them. Yeah. Hello? i got to get rid of some of this nonsense and focus on the harvest. There's a harvest here. The fields are white and ready for harvest. The whole earth is being prepared to be reaped. This is reaping time, baby. You know what I mean? The farmer don't go on vacation when it's time to bring in the harvest. Hello? The farmer reaps, man. If you don't reap in the harvest, then the fruit goes bad on the tree. Hello? And sometimes, man, you know what? You're going to reap what you sow. And sometimes in the midst of this whole thing, all we got is nonsense dancing around in our head. Hello? He's looking for people that are going to be mature. It's time to be... I ain't talking about that kind of mature neither. Hello? I mean really mature. He's trying to build us up to mature us. So we get over some of this petty nonsense that's going on around us. Letting these little things that are going on around us keep, her, keep us from the greater glory of what God's doing. To keep us from the greater glory of interconnected and interrelated relationships. Yeah. That we'll leave our place and position because of offense. Hello, if you can't be offensive, you will be offended. Stick around a little bit, I'm probably going to offend you in five or ten minutes. <laughs> Hey, if I don't step on your toes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hello? I want to tell you something about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's in your face. Yeah. It's offensive. Yeah. Hey, I hope you don't think that those guys were drugged through the streets, hung upside down on the cross, tried to boil them in, in oil because they were preaching a seeker-friendly gospel. <laughs> Hello? They were preaching the truth, the truth that is Christ. And the truth will confront you. And the truth requires a decision. When you and I hear the truth, we have to make a decision. And no decision is a decision. That's right. Hello? Yeah. So we're going to have to, we're going to have to salute the truth. Yeah. And it's only the truth that's going to set us free. Yeah. And we need to start to have some discernment to weed through some of the nonsense that's going on. Because I'm telling you what, some of the stuff that's going on passed off as end time prophetic stuff. Man, I'm going to tell you what, all they do is walking around in circles. I don't know about you, but I know that my God ain't up there in some fluffy, puffy little place. Hello? God is real, and he's also realistic, and he understands what's going on in the world. And when he speaks to us, he speaks to us with purpose, with reason. He wants us to do something. He's trying to motivate us, equip us, prepare us, bring us into proper in-time alignment. You think he's up there just fluffing around? Come on now. Sooner or later, you got to let your eyes be open and get rid of some of this nonsense. Let your, let, your, let your spirit begin to bear witness to the truth that is. Otherwise, it would be like the ones that got itchy ears. And there's a whole generation of them that's going to be around. And all they're going to want to do is listen for that thing that makes them feel good. If you're looking for the feel-good gospel, this ain't the place. If you're looking for the feel-good gospel, there ain't one. Hello? He said there's only one gospel. 
And the gospel of Jesus Christ will do business with your heart. It will do business with you. The word of God works and it will work on you if you let it. If you quit messing around and you really get down to business. I hope tonight you came ready to do business with God. You know what I mean? God wants to do business with you. But he came to do some business. I don't know about you. I want to be about the father's business. And daddy wants to do some business in our hearts. He wants to reveal some things and do some things. The sooner we get the reality of that, the sooner we're going to come to grips with who we are and where we're at so we know where we can go. Sooner or later, we have to touch our roots so we can reach our destiny. We have to be willing to go to those deep reservoirs inside of ourselves. We have to be willing to go to those places that we have locked up and begin to really get after it and let God get into it. Let him deal with those things. Because he's real and he wants to get real with you and I. He's ready to do something different, something very, very special. He said there's fire in the river, but sometimes we get a little mixed up with fire. Next weekend, Dr. Michael Brown will be here. <laughs> and he's all about fire, that brother. You know, he was the president of the Bible school that I went to in Pensacola, Brownsville Revival School of Ministry, and he's birthed another school called Fire, Fire School. Hello? I mean, he's into fire. That's what he's all about is about fire. And, you know, he, he's, God's doing something tremendous. But you know what he talks when he talks about revival, and he's got a heart. He's a great revivalist. He's got a great heart for revival. He's got a great heart for holiness. Has a great grip on both the Old and the New Testament. He's a Bible scholar that contends with and, uh, and uh, debates rabbis and, uh, and others that are unbelieving to the gospel message. He's a powerful man of God. And... and he loves revival, and he said that uh, he said it's time for us to go from holy laughter to holy fire. Huh? It's time to go to holy fire. It's time to go into that. But he said, you know, he, he was talking about the Pentecostal charismatic church. He said he's not sure if they were slayed in the spirit or out for the count. Oh, huh? hey man, there comes a time you got to get up off the floor and go to war. Is that how many times I fall down or how many times I get up? Is did my life get changed? Hey, is there a change, an outward expression of change? Is the fruit of my repentance, of my encounter with God? You tell me about all these angelic visitations, great. Well, I hope every time you have one, it makes a distinct change in your behavior. Don't you know he's after changing our behavior, changing our character into the likeness of Christ? That's the purpose of the Holy Spirit. It's to continue to change us into the, like, into the likeness of Christ. You think he wants me just to fall down and don't do anything with me? He's trying to get me to a place where he can change my life. Every time you get up, you need to get up a new person willing to deal with the issues that are still there in your heart, willing to address them, willing to face them down, because when you do, the enemy will leave, the enemy will run. I tried to run away from this nation, run away from my call here. I was only here a short time, and I was getting bombed even from the pulpits of local churches. And man, I'm saying, I'm getting out of here. I tried to get away and go to a, a, a scheduled meetings that I had in North Carolina. And on my way to the airport, he turned me around and brought me back. And when I came back, Sister Victoria Irving opened the door and she said, I had a dream and I know you're not gone. You're supposed to be here. He turned me around and dealt with my heart. I had to deal with some issues that were me. I was trying to escape. You know, nobody likes you when you feel like you're going through that meat grinder. When everything in, hello? Don't you know that that, most of the time, is, first of all, it's all father filtered. God didn't necessarily cause it. But with that adversity, he's going to bring forth the best in you and I, silver and gold. From our worst moments, he's going to bring forth is something greater than we could ever imagine. In, in my worst possible moments of my life, in my weakest moments, if you look deep enough, I could find a seed of equivalent or greater benefit. I could find God right in the midst of it. I could find God there and that seed that was the life-transforming seed that Christ leaves inside that situation when he's done dealing with it. There's nothing more wonderful than knowing you overcame that test. Well, sure you're going through a test. It's all a test. It's only a test. And the good news is, if you fail it, you get to take it again. And again, and again, 
and again. Yeah. You had a few agains? Hello? Spanish won for the fourth time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Fuego! That's when they say fire. Fire. Yeah. I talked to you about the furnace of adversity. Sometimes you don't realize that it's actually in the Word. It's not just something figment in somebody's imagination. Take a look at Isaiah first. Take a look for a minute at Isaiah. Uh, hallelujah. Take a look at Isaiah 48 and 10. He said, Behold, I have refined you. But not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace and in the fire and affliction. He didn't say that the enemy did. He said, I have tried you in the furnace of affliction. When you're going through that affliction, don't you know he's looking for it to bring pure silver? Not the silver that man sees, but the silver and the gold of God, the best that's in you. He's going to bring forth the best. And that furnace of adversity is a place for the making and the molding of true spiritual leaders. If you, and some of you are in the room tonight and you are a part of this emerging leadership generation. But you want to stand on the side. You want to do it without this. You want to do it without that. You want to do it on your terms. I'm here to tell you. I'm, I'm here as a person who, uh, who has an independent spirit, who, who has tried rebellion in every flavor <laughs> and in nearly every season. I, I got the bloody up now to show you what happened. Huh? You know when the rider just had to keep on pulling. You ever been there? Come on, man. I'm Italian. Stubborn goes with the whole deal. Got to break that thing sooner or later. Glory to God. Let him have his way. Because he ain't giving up. He ain't like me and you. He's going to stay till he gets the job done. Hallelujah. In the furnace... Of affliction. Glory to God. <laughs> you know, there's end time leaders who he's looking for today who are really ready to make a sacrifice. The ones that are willing to lead and to live on the very edge, on the edge of themselves. If you're a leader today in the kingdom of God, you have to lead right there on the prophetic edge because this is a prophetic generation. You have to be able to hear the voice of the Lord and you have to be able to lead by the voice of the Lord, by his prompting. He said the sons of God are those who are led by the Spirit of God. So I have to learn how to hear him and how to yield to him, how to submit to him. And sometimes that takes a little bit of hard work, learning how to live by faith, a real walk of faith. That faith that, that, that comes through the dealings and the issues that happen in your heart and in your life every single day. What a time it is that, we, that we're living in right now. Look at Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 28. He said, therefore... Since we receive a kingdom which cannot be shaken, he said everything that can be shaken will be shaken, but that that remains is of the kingdom. Now he says, therefore, since we receive a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us show gratitude by which we may offer to God an acceptable service with reverence and awe. For our God is a consuming fire. This reverence and awe? See, the fear of the Lord it's not about being afraid of God. Hello? You know, when, when on the mountains, the thunder and the lightning, and the Israelites, they didn't know no better, and they were saying, no, Moses. And they were, he said, don't be afraid. Yet God doesn't, we don't have to be afraid of God. That's not what the fear of the Lord is. It's having a reverence and an awe for God, a, a, a love for him, knowing that he is the all-consuming God that is jealous for you and I, that wants to bring change into our life. We have to submit ourselves to the mighty hand of God. We have to yield to that. We have to yield our will and our hopes, our dreams to it. There's a lot of things that he's doing right now in this particular season where leaders are, many times, they're, they're heartbroken. 
You know, as I travel around the body of Christ, and we've probably been to 180 or more churches across the nation of Canada, small and large alike, and you know what? Most of the time when I go, I'm ministering to leaders who have been hurt, pastors that have been wounded. I mean, they, these dudes got sheep bite, man. Hello? I mean, I got, we got a bunch of pastors in the house. Let me tell you what. they sheep bit. Right? They need healing. If they don't get healing, they're going to hurt somebody else because hurt people hurt other people. Hello? They need healing. They need help right now. They need help because it, it's on both sides. There's all this stuff that's going on. Things that we do to one another as human beings, as, as we pursue the things of God. I see such pain in their lives, in their families, in their homes. You see the destructive things that are going on right now. In them. And I want to tell you what, you, you have to know that God wants restoration, reconciliation, healing to come to these leaders. It's a time for it right now. It's a time for us to understand. And he wants these leaders in this season to have their hearts broken for the thing that's breaking God's heart right now. The thing that's on his heart right now is that his people would be equipped and empowered and launched into their destiny. He's trying to break the old model, the old mindset, the old wineskin of the preacher does it, the pastor does it, the pastor does it all. The pastor puts up the chairs, takes down the chairs, cooks the hamburgers on the ground, does the pastor does everything. Hello? It ain't very long until the pastor can't do nothing because the pastor's trying to do everything we got to realize that we are the body of Christ, that every one of us are ministers, and we're all called to minister. We're all called to minister. We're all part of the family of God. You know, if you're a parent in the family, I hope your children are doing chores. Huh? Come on now. Hello? Come on. Your parents, you got your kids doing chores, right? You, when you raise them up, you raise them up to do chores, right? Yeah, well, see, the church is the family of God in the spiritual realm. He's never going to get rid of uh, the, the, the local church. He loves the local church because this is his mirror concept spiritually of family. And if we're all family and we're all ministers and we're all priests, a holy nation and a royal priesthood, according to what Peter said, then we all need to have work to do, things to do. There's chores that need to get done in the house. Somebody say amen. Christianity is not meant to be a spectator sport. There are no spectators. In the game. If you're a spectator, it means you ain't in the game. Right. Huh? If you're saved, you need to get in the game, dude. Yeah. Time to get in the game. Woo. Sometimes I go into cities and the pastor say, Well, I don't know, maybe people are going to come around and go over your church. They ain't going to last long on my church. Are you kidding me? I'm going to blow them out in two or three weeks. <laughs> I mean, if they're a happy go lucky churchgoer, they ain't, this ain't the place for them. Right. We are equipping end time leaders, end time warriors, end time handmaidens that want to do the work of ministry, that want to be addicted to the ministry of the saints. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. This is not a spectator sport. This is not a place you come to hang out. Hello? Yeah. Man, it's time to put your hand to the plow, dude. Come on. Here, you need to get well. Well, come on, get well. Get well here in a hurry, and let's go put our hand to the plow again. <laughs> There's work to be done. The clock is ticking. If you can't hear the heart of God, then you don't have no spiritual ears. Because anybody with spiritual ears know that the clock is ticking spiritually. That we are quickly moving into those days that he, that he foretold through every prophet. These are the days that end time prophecy is being fulfilled. The harvest is ready. The harvest is white. What are you doing, man? What are you waiting for? If not now, when? You want to wait till it's over? You want to wait till you hear the trumpet sound? Then do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Huh? I wish I was young. If I was young again, I'd take a great big bite out of Redier's eyeballs, man. I'm telling you right now. I'd do some business with him. Are you kidding me? What a time to be alive in Jesus Christ. What a time to be alive in the Lord. Huh? Paul is up there saying, I wish I was with them. We are the generation of destiny. We are the generation that every previous generation prophesied and prayed for. It's happening now. I remember the first year we had the tent. What was that, 11 years ago? 11 years ago, we had no tent. First year we had camp here on the campgrounds, no tent. We had it outside the snack bar on the concrete. 
And man, we had, man, that the concrete was warm. We had no blankets, no nothing. Man, we was on it. Whoop, down there, man, they were out. It was halftime, couldn't even find the catcher. Catcher was knocked down. They didn't care, man. I mean, it was crazy. But then, off of the lake would come all these Canadian geese, and they'd fly up, and they'd start to go over. I said, no, don't look up. <laughs> what? Oh, man. <laughs> Them Canadian geese is anointed. <laughs> when we used to go out somewhere, especially in the States and in Trinidad, these are called the Canadian geese are here. I said, yeah, we seen them. See them, they're anointed. <laughs> Glory to God. You are anointed. Yes, yes. This is Canada's time. Yes. Are you part of the church of Jesus Christ in Canada? I'm telling you, the stage is coming up right up right before your eyes. You have a, you have a worldwide platform yes. that is rising as we speak. Yes, it is. And it won't be long that the whole world is going to be looking. Right now, the whole world is knocking on the door. They want to come. Yes. They want what you have. Yes. Don't you know that you live in one of the most wonderful nations in all the world? This is the place where people want to come rejoice in your nation. He's giving you a worldwide platform. Yeah. But you need to use it for his purposes, for his plan. That's right. Not for nonsense, yeah. because it's a very, very important moment in time. It's a prophetic and a strategic moment. This fire of God is an important factor in preparing us for the end time harvest, preparing us for leadership. If we're, if we're not prepared and we go into it totally unprepared, we had that time, that season, to submit, to yield. I mean, it, it, it seems hard. But I want you to know that every single test, when you overcome it, it can be something really small. But you know how big it is in your heart. You know, sometimes it's the little things. You know, he, he says it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. He knows the little things that get you, eh? And, you know, and, and you see, and you know, when you begin to realize that God's be behind the scenes, he's the one doing the test. I was just talking to that, just talking to Danny about that. About, you know, when you overcome that, such a wonderful and rewarding feeling. Because you realize that you are part of this overcomer's generation. And it's another step on the ladder that you need to climb to reach that spiritual destiny that God has for you. It's overcoming these situations. It's not avoiding them. It's not avoiding conflict. You can't. As long as there's two people in the room. Sooner or later, there's going to be conflict. Hello? Hey, especially if you're husband and wife. Oh, I'm being my husband, and we never argue. Come out of that woman now. Get that lying spirit out of there, and then we can deal with the business at hand. Hello? Come on, if there's two people in the room, give them time. Give them a little time. People know how to do it, man. Yeah. Oh, push buttons. What? Sometimes I think I got buttons on the outside. Tell them, push here, please. Yeah. Ah, I'm gonna, sometimes it's the most unusual people. What? And then the craziest time, right before, you're ready for a great victory? You're ready for a moment. You're on trial. It's ready now. Now's the time. The lights come on. The sound comes on. Here comes the little sister Susie. <laughs> what? Not now. Susie. Anytime but now. <laughs> you better have a sense of humor. God does. Just look around at some of the people in the room. You know God got a sense of humor. Just look at these people. You figure out that dude got a sense of humor. If he didn't look, if, if he didn't, we'd all look alike. He likes all this. You know, hello, to, you, are you kidding me? He likes it. He said, ah! He's enjoying this. You got anxiety? He ain't got no anxiety. Dump your anxiety on him. He knows what to do with it. You don't need to carry that anxiety around, man. I'm anxious. Give it to God. He ain't too anxious. He knows what's going to happen. That's right. The problem is you're holding on to it instead of giving it to God. Right. Hello? You want to try to fight your battle instead of letting him fight your battle. Yes. You want to get back on the phone and tell him all these things. You want to get back on the email. I'm going to fire him off an email. This will straighten him out. 
Hello? It ain't the way it works. If you sow flesh, you reap flesh. Hello? If you sow in the spirit, you're going to reap in the spirit. Give yourself a chance to win. Process the doggone thing a little bit. Hello? Process a little bit in your heart. Because God is trying to work on you, man. And he uses the people nearest and dearest to you to work on you. You want to know why? Because they got access to you. <laughs> and they got access to your heart. The more you love them, the more you care about them, the more you respect them, the more open your heart is. Zzz. Uh, somebody got up here the other night and said, I love everybody, but I don't like them. Who was that, Norm? Norm. I want to say, Norm, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> There's some people I love a whole lot more than I like. <laughs> Bzz, ah, Susie. I'm going to tell you, I think I got buttons sticking out. Hey, if you see one, do me a big favor. Don't push it. Refrain from pushing. I want to put on air. Refrain from pushing, please. <laughs> well, maybe you got some flesh. Well, go ahead and push it. You're going to see some flesh, honey. You ain't seen flesh like the flesh I got. Push the button, baby. <laughs> this is a warning. Don't push the button. <laughs> Don't fuss with Russ. <laughs> hey, I, I confirm that word. That's a good word. <laughs> God's working on us. I thank God that he's working on me. Yes. I don't ever want him to stop working yeah. on me. Amen. I want him to finish this work that he started. Yeah. I want him to work on me right up to the day when he blows the horn. I want him to be working on me. Yeah. And I want to be working things out. Before him. Not just before him, but in him. Yeah. There's something about being in Christ. Being hidden in Christ. By allowing Christ to have such access to every area of your life, that in the midst of this, it's hard to have those buttons pushed. It seems like he can just... You ever been in that bubble? You remember when you first got saved? There was so much grace around you, no matter what they said, no matter what they did. You, de uh, hello. <clears throat> well, I'm sure it's there. <laughs> Maybe I got buttons for treating. My button's sticking out here. This is something else here. I'm going to tell you what. There's some stuff that God said. He is a consuming fire. He's trying to do business. He's trying to deal with us. He's trying to prepare us for the harvest. There's a harvest that's coming. We need to be equipped. We need to be empowered. We need to be prepared. We need to be healed. We need to put ourselves, you know what, this don't happen overnight. I, I'm, you know, sometimes people come in and the next thing you know, man, they're in for three weeks and of course they're, they're, they're the uh, 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 prime minister of the city. You know what I mean? Prime minister of the church. The apostle to all of Canada. And they've only been saved three weeks. Hello. But <clears throat> they want it all done right now. I know what you mean. What do you think? I got a patience issue? Look. <laughs> my family. My, you know what? My family name was issues. It doesn't no matter what their first name and their last name, but their middle name was all issues. We got issues, man. Patience was an issue. Patience can be an issue now. You got to, hey, man. You gotta, he's trying to develop patience. You know, I say to the person, look, did, did all these breakdowns in your life, did they happen in the last three weeks? No. Oh, but you think they're all going to be fixed in the next three weeks? Huh? No. 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 That first day, that first moment is the first step. I'm going to tell you what, these things come off like peeling onions. They come off in layers. I'm going to tell you the truth. When I come in, if he would have peeled everything off of me, I, I, I may have perished. 
Hello? I mean, I had stuff. Hey, are you kidding me? I was insulated with issues. You know what I'm talking about? I had layer upon layer issues. I mean, when he started peeling, it took him a long time to get even to the flesh. There was some mean stuff that was out front. Hello? There was some mean stuff there. He just peeled off. So he said, I'm like, hey, hey. He don't get down to the good stuff for a while. I mean, the first stuff is all the stuff, all the flesh. You know what I mean? All the addiction, all the problems. He deals with that. That's right out. It's in your face. You know, he don't even got it in him that. Nobody had to tell me, rest, you're a sinner. Are you kidding me? My sins were all around me. My sins bore witness to their self, man. <laughs> he deal with them quick, but they were the easy ones. It's when he wants to start going a little bit deeper. After he gets them first couple layers off, you know, the habits and the habit forces in your life and the negative habits. And uh, Now he starts getting down to some of the deeper issues. And then he starts getting down to the deep emotional issues all the way at the bottom. And it takes time until he can get there because you're not ready yet. He's peeling these things away. Some of these things are deeply rooted, and we have them very heavily guarded in our heart. And what we need to do is let him have access to it. He wants to begin to peel these surface things away and all this fleshly nature, and he wants to get down to the business of transforming us from the inside out so that our thoughts and our emotions are, 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 are godlike and Christ-like that we learn how to process things and we know how to be patient and we wait for things, that we don't just react, but we rather we take our time and we respond to the situation in a positive way, that we don't just go there and give a person a piece of our mind. Hello? You start giving away, I'm telling you what, I want to be honest with you now, I know some folks in the kingdom <laughs> that they ain't got enough mind to go leaving a piece here and there. <laughs> Hello? Don't give a piece of your mind away. You need every bit you got, baby. Huh? Some of you need all you can muster up. Don't be leaving it nowhere. Don't give it to nobody else. You need yours. I've been around you. I know. <laughs> that was good. That was good. I like that one. Hey, turn that machine off. <laughs> We're going to get down to business in a minute. I'm only kidding you, man. <laughs> you know, the nice thing, we can have fun. If we can't laugh at ourselves, what are we going to do? You're going to walk around, old sourpuss look on you all the time? Come on, man. Get over it. You know, some of you walk into church. Well, it's like, why did that? Why did Pastor John do that to me? Pastor John didn't talk to me. He didn't greet me. He didn't, you know, uh, and now you see Pastor John, and he's with Pastor Victoria. They're probably talking about me. Are you kidding me? Honey, you just ain't that important. You know what I mean? You, you got to get over yourself. Everybody that's talking ain't talking about you. <laughs> this is not a conspiracy, and you're the person. You're the one. They're all after you. <laughs> no. Get over yourself, sweetie. You just ain't that important. Hello? This whole thing don't revolve around me or you. But this whole world revolves around the sun. Right. Let's keep our eyes on him. Amen. Right? And, and let him do business with us and start to walk through situations, begin to respond instead of react. Right? Yes. And when you get offended, you're going to get offended. Yes. But don't allow that offense to take a position in your heart that would rob you of your destiny. Yes. But that make you say something that's going to bring hurt and pain to someone else. Hello, process it a little bit. Give it a little time. Hey, I got a great idea for you. And this may even be spiritual. I'm not sure all the other stuff was, but this might be. You know, henceforth, this could be. <laughs> Take it to the Lord. Yeah. Take it to the Lord. Yeah. Why are you dumping it back on them? Take it to the Lord. That's the only one can answer this thing. You think Bozo that just offended you could handle your problem? No. Take it to the Lord. It's the only place. Come on, Lord. You ain't got to be real smart. I'm evidence of that. I'll bear witness to you. You ain't got to be smart to serve the Lord. Hello? I mean, I could say some really off-the-wall stuff, right? And get away with it. 
Man, I, I, some, I really hope it's the Lord. If it ain't the Lord, I'm in deep trouble. Man. You know, if this stuff ain't the Holy Ghost, when I go, can you imagine how trouble I'm going to be in? Actually, I sure hope it's the Lord. Glory to God. He's working on you. It's a test. But it's only a test. And the test prepares you for promotion. Let's start to look at the test like an opportunity for promotion. And say, I want to overcome. Huh? I'm going to pass this one. Here she is. She's waiting. Boom! You know, she rocked your boat. Take a step back. Do the deep breath. This is the test that you want to pass. Because you don't want to go through the same one next week, man. Because you're going to keep going through this test till you beat it. You want to keep doing it over and over and over? When she bow, give her a big smile. Bow deep. Bow deep. It's going to be okay. You're going to be surprised at what happens when you get a Vic like that. Come on now. Hey, get the Vic. Get a Vic one time. Hey, I'm going to be happy when you get a Vic because I mean, some of you. <laughs> no, no, not you, Victoria. <laughs> oh, my. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. And He's always on our side. Knowing his heart and his motive makes it easier for me to handle some of the stuff that I have to go through. Yeah, I'm going to tell you the truth. If I was like 19, 20 years old, and, and, you know, and, I, and I was like tall, dark, and handsome, and hair all over, <laughs> big muscles, <laughs> you remember that? Oh, I just got caught up in feet. said, pull down and vain imagination. <laughs> Vain imaginations. Where was I going before I got carried away? I have no idea. If I was a young person today, today, I'd have purple hair, green hair, red hair, don't matter. But I would be happy to be alive in the Lord. How huh? would the whole world there before me? I'm going to tell you, what a great time to be a young person in Christ with your whole world in front of you. And you know, at that age, it was easier for me to adapt to change. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little harder <laughs> the older I get. <laughs> uh, you remember the layers? <laughs> remember the <laughs> layers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been layering that thing up a little bit. Sometimes them layers make it hard to turn, hard to change. But he's going to change you no matter what. He don't have, I'm going to tell you, the Holy Ghost. He's the hound of heaven. He's going to hound you until he gets the job done. You can't call him, I'm telling you right now, man. He's on your case. He's on your tail. He's going to work this thing out. Whatever that thing is that you're hiding, he's after it. Because he knows that you are hiding from yourself. Hello? You ain't hiding it from God. God sees all things. You're hiding it from yourself. And to your own self, you got to be true. Sooner or later, you got to deal with self. So you can grow and overcome. So you can help someone else. So that you can realize the changing power of Christ in the heart of a man or woman. Hello? He's still changing me today. And every day I try to yield more and more. I want to be more hungry. I want to be more faithful. I want to be easier to maneuver, to turn, to change. I want to be better equipped in the year ahead than I am this year. I want to be better to handle adversity because more adversity is coming. You know, I, I mean, unless you, I believe more is on the way. I believe that I serve the God of more than enough. And I believe that more is coming. Hello? More people, more things, more, more people bring things. <laughs> Yeah, here's the boss. Look, he says to the employee, he says, leave your troubles at home. Yeah. Them troubles are inside that person laughing. <laughs> I ain't staying home. <laughs> they're coming to work with her. Hello, they're coming to church with them. 
They ain't leaving unless you cast them out. Hello? You can't lovey dubby them out. You can't counsel them out. You can't talk them out. You got to cast them out. You got to do some business with these things. He's trying to train us up, prepare us, equip us, empower us. So we can get a real fresh revelation. And it's time. Come on now. It's going to be over before you know it. You know what? When the Holy Spirit goes to work and he starts to cut and to carve at you, anybody feel him cutting and carving at you? When he starts to, I'm going to tell you what, he starts to, he cuts nice. With no problem. He cuts things out. Like, like getting a cord on a watermelon. If it ain't the Holy Ghost, though, look out. Huh? You know, if it's somebody else trying to deal with it, hello. I, I mean, if, if, if that's you trying to deal with your spouse and cut it out naturally, hello, you're gonna leave a lot of scars on that sister, huh? But not the Holy Ghost. He knows how to carve out that little piece and leave everything in place. He doesn't only weed; he seeds. Hello, takes the weed out, puts the seed in. New growth, new development, new you. Right, this new you thing, this new man. This new life, huh? This is not a one-time experience that you get born again. You need to get born again, born again, born again. Some of you people need to get born again tonight. <laughs> but it's born again over and over and over. We need to get born again every day. I need to let him continue to make me and mold me and change me. I don't mean I need to get saved again. Although I know some of you are praying for my salvation, maybe. <laughs> I'm talking about to walk out this new birth, new life experience. It's a new every day. His mercies are new every day, and so is this life experience new every day. Yes, he is an all-consuming fire. And yes, the fire is going to burn out a lot of stuff. But I'll tell you, one of the most, the most wonderful thing in my life was the day that I said yes to Jesus Christ. There was nothing like that moment in time. I'll never forget it as long as I live. And the things that he's took me through, the things that he's pulled out and changed in my life, I would not give up one of them. I cherish every one of them. My, my most horrible experiences I cherish because I know that he did something in me in the midst of that. Let him, let him finish the work that he's begun. He knows how to finish. He knows what you need. He knows where you're going. He knows what you're doing. Put yourself in the right place. Begin to yield. You know, if you know you're called and you know he's going to use you, then put yourself in a place, in a position where you can be equipped and be empowered. You know, don't just look for church. Because it ain't about going to church. It's about being the church. It's the experience about who we are and what we are. And, it's a, and God's doing something bigger, greater, grander than we can imagine in the scope of typical church. He's changing church. Because he wants it to be real, a real experience. And people have talked to you all about the fancy stuff of the revelatory realm and the glory realm and the kingdom realm. You know what? They're all here. They're all here and they're all here. They're all in your heart. Just give them a little room. Let him work this thing out one step at a time. Be careful that you don't just fluff away into lollipop land. Keep your feet on the ground. Hmm? Come on down. Come on down here, honey. Come on down here. Put your feet on the ground. Put your hand on the plow. Come on. I'm going to tell you what, it's going to be a better day tomorrow. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Tomorrow, the best day of my whole life. Yeah. My greatest experiences are yet to come. That's right. I'm expecting them. Hello? My greatest days are in a place of expectation. Right. Your greatest days lie ahead, not behind. That's right. Leave that old experience behind. Just come on, go forward. Let's just go forward now. Leave all that old stuff behind. If there's some stuff that you know you've got to leave behind. Man, maybe I talked about something. I don't know how to put it up tonight, but if I did. Talk about some stuff that was really meaningful to you. And you really want to put it behind you. Just put your hand on your heart right now. If there's some stuff that you just haven't been able to swim through. You know what kind of stuff gets a little thick in there. Just put it behind you now. Put your hand on your heart. I didn't work you over. Oh, maybe, it, maybe it's somebody. Maybe it's something. Maybe it's somebody that's still tuning you up right now. Maybe they're still doing it today. Maybe they did it this afternoon. Maybe they're going to do it tomorrow. Now's a good time just to let it go. Just give it to the Lord. Just let him have it. He knows what to do with it. 
He is the burden bearer. You and I are not. He is the only burden bearer. Let him have it. He wants to carry this for you. He wants to carry this load, to carry this burden now. Father, you see our hands, you know our heart. You know the issues that we're going through. You know what's troubling us. And Father, I thank you right now that you're just going to that you're just going to lift every heavy thing, every spirit of contention and strife, anger, rage, revenge, retaliation, unforgiveness. Father, you're just going to lift it right now. Depression, heaviness, sadness, sorrow. You're just going to lift it right now, Lord. Father, we just thank you that it's lifting right now. Every heavy thing, morbidity, hopelessness. Now, just to lift right now, just to lift and to go now. Every mind binding, every mind controlling spirit, I address you now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lift and leave them go now in Jesus' name. Let every heavy thing that's on their heart now, I break the generational curses now. I break the word curses. I, I, I take authority over them now. According to the word of God in Galatians 3.13, Lord, you took the curse of the law upon yourself. And Father, right now, in your name and by the power of your blood, I sever the curses now. And I command them now to loose their hold and to go. Right now, in every spirit connected and interrelated to it now, to go. Every assignment of the enemy now, I cancel you and I call you none and void now in Jesus' name. I declare healing now to him, Lord. Healing. Release your healing power. Release your healing virtue. Release your healing love now. I come against the spirits of addiction, particularly generational curses that led to addiction. And I speak to you now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I command every addictive spirit to go now in Jesus' name. Every bit of compulsive behavior and spirits that would cause it, I command you now to loose your hold and to go now. I speak to anxiety, stress, pressure, fear, worry, doubt, insecurity, Re rejection, I come against you now in Jesus' name. I command you now to loose your hold and to go in the name of the Lord. That every heavy thing would leave us now. Now, now. Every heavy thing that's on our mind, on our heart now. Anything that would cause problems with our digestive system now. Any, anything that's assigned to, our, uh, to, to come against our digestive system now. Our stomach, our bowels, our bladder right now in Jesus' name. I command you to loose your hold and to go right now. Right now in the name of the Lord. I declare healing over them now. I declare hope. Father, I, I declare victory now. I declare them, Lord, as your generation of overcomers. Father, I just thank you right now that your power to overcome will be released to them right now. Father, that you always know. Father, there is no temptation that's taken us that is not common to men. And you always make a way of escape. Father, I thank you right now that you're going to reveal to us in every circumstance, in every situation, that you're going to show us the way out, that you're going to show us how to get through it, that you're going to show us how to get to victory, that you're going to give us divine insight and discernment and patience, that we'll be able to walk through these situations and process them perfectly, Lord, perfectly, that we come out the other side victorious. Father, I thank you that, that we are victorious, that we are overcomers. Father, I bless them now. I bless them now in Jesus' name. I bless them right now in the name of the Lord. I bless them now. Father, and I ask you to bless them physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially. I ask, Lord, that you bless them in their coming and their going, that you bless them in their work and in their leisure, that you bless them in their families, that you make them vessels of reconciliation and restoration, that your perfect divine peace would dwell within them. That there would be a shield, the peace round about them. Lord, that no conflict, no strife, no anger would be able to get within the circle that you put around them. I thank you right now, Lord, that your perfect peace that goes beyond all understanding would permeate their hearts. Right, Father, a new heart and a new start tonight. A new start tonight. Father, taking off the old and putting on the new. Right now, emotionally, spiritually, physically, mentally. Right now, I speak to mental illness and spirits that would cause mental illness. I, I, I speak to the spirits that would cause mood swings. ADD, ADHD, I speak to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and I command you now to loose your hold and go. Now, every type of spirit that would cause mood swings, right now, in Jesus' name, I command you to go now. Now, to leave now, in the name of the Lord. Schizophrenia, I command you to go, in Jesus' holy name. Hallelujah. Let your healing power, let your healing love just rest upon him right now. Father, I thank you for a good night's rest. Father, I thank you that you're going to renew their strength. 
like the eagle, like they wait on you. I thank you, Lord, that you give your beloved a good night's rest. Father, I declare that over them that tonight would be a, a peaceful night of rest and sleep in your presence. Father, that the heavens would be open above them. And Father, that the angels, just like they did for Jacob, would go up and down. And bring them revelation and wisdom and understanding, dreams and visions in the heavenly realm. And Father, that your blessing would rest upon them and their families. In the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. We are going to have a phenomenal week. We have Prince Loss here tomorrow. Pastor Jane Louder is coming to town. Come on, Sister Jane, a powerful woman of God. It's going to be a tremendous prophetic night. Every night that she's here, I mean, that's, you know, I meet a lot of ministers. She is the most able minister I have ever met. That woman is an able minister. Not only does she have an accurate prophetic word, but she knows how to minister. She's ministered in close to 100 nations in the world and just a powerful voice of hope in the dark places. I mean, come on out. A very strong apostolic and prophetic voice. Later on in the week, we have uh, Dr. Michael Brown. Couch. Oh! This is going to be a prophetic week. It's like you've got another week of school of the prophets. Huh? Gail couldn't come this year because he was in Trinidad. He was in Trinidad. He was in my beloved Trinidad. Right? So he couldn't come to school of the prophets, but he could come this week. So he's coming. And, and Sister Jane will be here. And Michael Brown will be here. From glory to glory. I'm going to get fat in the Holy Ghost. I like this. This is a good deal. If you're part of the prayer team, I want you to come up to the front. If you need personal prayer and you'd like personal prayer, we have a prayer team here. Let's give Matthew from uh, Capital City Church a great big hand. My wonderful brother, the worship leader at Capital City Church, Mike and Linda Welsh, wonderful pastors there. We also have the Martyr family that are here, uh, the wonderful. And they are, they are just a great, great family. When we go there, they help to host us there at, at, in Ottawa. Huh? And here too! <laughs> what, what wonderful hearts they have. Make sure you go and say hi to them, or our visitors from New York, or our brother from Ireland. And, you know, make sure you greet somebody on the way out. But if you need prayer, don't leave till you get the prayer you need. By the way, these folks are prophetic, and most every one of them deal with inner healing issues. Oh, Pastor Maeve said the chip wagon is open. <laughs> You know, some folk you'll be looking for the spiritual food. And some folk you'll be looking for the other kind of food. You'll be into the pop and fry routine. <laughs> uh, if, you, if you need prayer, one prayer. And they'll pray for whatever you need. Just relax, come up, get the prayer you need. Make sure you greet somebody on the way out. We're going to have an awesome week. This is, we haven't even gotten to the halfway point yet. Get ready to soak in the glory here at camp. Get out here as often as you can. We have some great speakers coming, very anointed men and women of God. God bless you now, and you have a great night, and we'll see you, uh, see you soon. Brent's lost here tomorrow night.